Hello and welcome to Encore. I'm Melissa Bell. Today we meet with a writer who needs no introduction at all here in France. Marc Lévy sold 35 million books, translated into 49 languages in 47 countries. He's just published his 17th novel, L'Horizon à l'envers, or A Spin on the Horizon, which he's come to tell us all about. Marc Lévy, thank you very much indeed for being our guest today. We're delighted to have you on the show. Uh, just before we move on to your latest offering, the book uh, uh, that you're uh, publish publishing at the moment, uh, we've just been listening to the figures. No writer working in French today sells as many books as you do. What is uh, the secret, the recipe to writing a bestseller? I honestly have absolutely no idea. Um, I wish there would be a recipe because I'm, 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 I'm very lazy, so I would use it. I don't know. I think it's... Uh, I have... Um, I think I, I, um, it's luck, and, and I'm, I'm trying to work very hard to deserve a part of this luck. Um, so I will mostly attribute it to luck and, and, and work. Um, what else, you know, what, what could it be? I have really no idea, and I'm trying not, never to think about it. No, it's, yeah, I, can I can imagine it's not an easy thing uh, to get to the bottom no, of but necessarily. I think, you know, I think that one of the... Uh, the amazing mag magic of, of writing is the freedom that write, uh, writing gives you. And, and I think that this, free this freedom requires that you do your work um, with an absolute humility. You have to work very seriously, but never take you very seriously. Uh, otherwise, you're going to compromise this freedom uh, extremely. So uh, the fact that you have many readers is an incredible gift and makes you the most happiest reader uh, writer um, of the world. But um, Every time that I start to write a new novel, I'm remembering myself that I'm not working on, on, you know, on a very major vaccine or, or I'm writing a book. It's a book. Yes. On that question, I mean, you're remarkably prolific. You write a novel a year. Uh, does that imply that there's some sort of uh, formula behind what you write? Is there something that works that you apply to different narratives or do you reinvent yourself as a writer each time? No, I wish I would, but, you know, I don't want... To compromise this freedom by writing, you know, only thrillers or only uh, romantic comedy or only adventure books. So I've explored all genre because this is the absolute magic of writing. So there is absolutely no formula. Still, uh, even if a singer uh, can change, you know, his repertoire of songs all the time, you will have one voice. And my voice is that I'm a writer who writes a character driven story. Um, and I would say that the only thing that applies that is a common thing to all my novel, um, they are based on characters and I have to be attached to my characters and, and the first thing I'm going to tell to you about is about these characters and I'm going to work very hard so that they are going to become part of your life at least for the time of the reading and if I work hard enough, even when you close the book, you're going to keep a part of them with you. It is definitely the case of, of, of the latest uh, book to, that we'll move on to uh, in just a moment. One more question, uh, slightly broadly, though. Uh, the question of longevity. Do you think there's a trade-off? Uh, can you be popular in your day and have your work last? I don't know. I mean, only future will tell. But, you know, um, I don't think it matters. Um, I mean, a lot of people... I mean, I know some people think a lot about, you know... Uh, um, Posterity. Yeah. Posterity, um, I won't be there, <laughs> you know, so I don't care. Well, not unless the plot of your latest novel comes true and more of that in a second. For those of you uh, who live outside of France or don't read in French, uh, here's a little uh, taste of precisely what the name Marc Lévy means here in France. His name is like a brand. And what I mean by that is if you say... What's the new Marc Levy book like? Well, the answer will be, it's a Marc Levy. There are very few cases like that, where a name is all that's needed to sell a novel. You don't need to ask what's in the new Marc Levy book. You just buy it. There's just something far-reaching about his name. Which must be a lovely thing to hear Thank when you're you so a writer. <laughs> um, I wonder, though, um, the critics haven't always been so kind uh, here in France with, with your writing. Do, how, how does that feel? Does that bother you? Does it? I thank them very much much um critics is good you know critics make you work harder and uh critic challenges you so uh i thank them very much and 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 you know the things have changed over the time and and now they are not as harsh as they were at the beginning because i worked and so i will be thankful of my life to be uh you know critic because first 
You know, if someone takes its time to critique you, I mean, the thing you have to remember is that, you know, someone take a part of his time to write about, you know, your book and he could have done something else. So uh, thank you very much. It's, it's probably good news. Now, you weren't always a writer, of course. For a long nope. time, you were a businessman. You came to writing uh, fairly late. H how difficult was it to write your first book? It was not because I had no idea that I was writing a book. Truly, you know, I was... Um, uh, I came to the writing because I was I was one of these father who was telling story to his son and I was writing every night a story for the next night and then one day my son turned you know nine or ten and it explains me that you know TV is much more interesting than daddy's story and my thought was that you know I, I missed that moment a lot and and I start, started to think that if I couldn't write anymore for the child maybe I could write for the adult he would become one day and I started to write just for the pleasure and I would, you know, I would never have thought about, you know, publication. Like I guess many people start to paint or play music without thinking that they will, you know, uh, be on stage or do an exhibition. So um, it was, it was just pleasure because I didn't thought about the publication. Once it was published, then you know, I, for the first year, I, I, I was wondering every morning, what did I do? What did I do? But, uh, partic particularly because it was, it, it became uh, s such a success. Your latest book, then, uh, L'Horizon à l'envers, a spin on the horizon, a story of three st three young students, uh, neuroscience scientists, who decide to play God in a sense uh, when one of them is diagnosed with a tumor. Uh, you based it on a story that you'd come across in the New York Times. Why did the story catch your eye? Because it, it was an amazingly uh, hot. I mean, uh, touching a love story about this couple where, you know, uh, one, uh, I mean, the, 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 the woman of the couple, you know, uh, has a brain tumor and, and they are so in love that they, they are going to decide to beat death and that death won't separate them and she decides to be cry cryogenized uh, so that in the future uh, she will be able to, uh, to, to see him again. And when I, when I finished this uh, article in the New York Times, first I was extremely moved and then over the days, you know, an idea came on, and 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 this novel, which is very different from the real story of uh, uh, Kim and Josh, uh, uh, the real Kim and Josh, uh, came to me, and um, and that's how came you know Spin the Horizon. And without giving too much uh, away, obviously, about the way uh, that the book ends, it's a story about love, it's about death, uh, it's about memory, uh, uh, it's about uh, the passing of time. Universal themes, really. Do you believe, as you suggest in the book, that the medicine uh, that we're beginning to look at is going to change our fundamental relationship to those themes, to those things. I think that the uh, I think we are at the at the very edge of a complete new era. I, I truly believe that the the, pro the the progress of science and and all the discovery that will be revealed in the next ten years, and I'm very I think uh, safe by saying next ten years are going to completely change the way we live because we're going to live much, much longer and we're going to be more and more able to repair our body and, uh, and also to prevent um, uh, the aging. I'm not talking about the physical aspect of our body. I'm talking about the aging of our organs. Once again, I want to be clear, this is not a scientific book. When Jules Verne wrote From Earth to Moon, he was not designing, he was not drawing, you know, a space shuttle or explaining to the NASA engineer how we would launch a, a space shuttle. He just had an idea, and maybe this idea inspired, you know, some of the people who finally end up sending, uh, this is an adventure, it's a, lo it's a true love story. Um, I think a very, very strong love story, but it's based on, uh, I would say, the Diary of Good News, which we don't see so much often. The, the book has been published for a couple of weeks, and, and I'm, I would say that one of the things that makes me the happiest writer right now is that I've received already hundreds of letters and emails from readers, and they all say your book give, give us so much hope. And that's also maybe why the, the name of this amazing woman in the book, uh, her, her first name is Hope. And, and that matter, that she should be called Hope, that is what it is about. Because it was my whole intention in writing this book. You know, sometimes you were talking about the writing process and, and, and what do I feel about all the figures and, and about the uh, eventual, you know, uh, pression on me. There is one thing which, as an, as an artisan, I'm always wonder when I finish the novel, you know. Um, what, does a story, what does a story tell? You know, why, why someone would give me six, seven, eight hours of his time uh, to read my novel. Is there, is there something more than the story? And 
truly when I start this book, my, my idea was it has to be a story that gives hope. It has to be one of these stories that when you, when you end the book, not only you're in love with the characters, but you really, really feel enthusiastic about the future. Because uh, this, this novel and presumably your others uh, uh, does that, translates a feeling, uh, an idea, uh, hope in this case, is that why you believe that they translate as well as they do? It's an extraordinary figure to be able to trans have your books translated in that number of languages. What's, what's, what's the key to that? Why is that possible? I think it's possible. Um, I think it's possible when your story are character driven, and when you have not, and when you don't caricaturize your characters. If you make your character, you know, uh, so American that only an American will understand it, or so French that you know only a French will understand what he says. Of course, um, this character will not be uh, felt as it could by a Vietnamese or a Russian readers. Um, I strongly believe uh, in humankind and in the universal, in some of the universality of humankind. And I, maybe the way I draw my characters is that, you know, they can be perceived by a Vietnamese reader or a Russian reader or an American reader in the same way that we can perceive them. Marc Lévy, thank you very much indeed for being our guest. Uh, it, it will be available in English uh, soon enough. A Spin on the Horizon will be its title once it's translated uh, and you can uh, look forward to reading it then. Thanks very much indeed for being with us here on Encore. Thanks again to thank you, you for being much. with us. See you again soon.